what is a floating card? Ooh. I'm going to show you in today's video what my version of a floating card is. So if you were to go to Google and Google in the search bar floating cards, you're going to get a whole bunch of magic tricks, which are cool. I can't do any of them. But let's take the word floating cards and incorporate them into card making and see what magic we can do there. So let's get to it. So prior to the start of this video, I took quite a bit of time, went through my stash, found some different images I could stamp and color and die cut, and that's what's in that bowl right there. So I'll be pulling out of that bowl, so I encourage you to check your stash, see what you have. Now I'm gonna use flowers for the first couple of cards, but if you don't have floral die cuts, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna show you how to do it with circles. If you don't have the first product that I'm using, uh, and these couple of cards, don't worry, I'm going to show you another alternative in the video. So there's lots of stuff going on. So just basically, you got to stay with me the whole video. <laughs> All right, so I'm just figuring it out. This is probably what took the longest time is figuring out a layout for the card. I mean, when you're sticking it, now that green cardstock you see there, that's basically just a placer. I just grabbed a piece of cardstock. I'm not going to use it for the finished card. I just needed to, you know, whatever the size of the floating card that you're going to be making is what you kind of want to use as a placer, as a guide. So it never looks good going on like this, but just wait till it's finished. So the magic product for the first way of doing it is press and seal, which you can get from your grocery store, your Target, your Walmart, your pharmacy, wherever. It's everywhere. And it's basically tacky on one side and not on the other. So when you press it down, it kind of activates this tackiness like this magic tacky stuff. And uh, that's what I'm gonna do. So I press, 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 make sure it's all good and pressed on there and sealed, if you will, and then I'll pull off that green backer. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of glue and glue down some of the leaves that are overlapping onto the back there, just so I don't lose the placement of it. And I think what makes a floating card cool is by adding some dimensional tape. You don't have to do this, but I, I think it gives it more of a float light look. So I'm just using a lot of foam dimension. And once I have that on the back there, I'll take that press and seal panel. I'll kind of align it. I find that white cardstock looks really good because it looks like it's floating. So you can use any colored cardstock you want, but white gives it that magical look to me anyway. And then I'll go ahead and cut off the excess and then you have this like float light card here it's all cool and just floating there's nothing backing it you can't see any of the backers you know, there's no backer paper or anything so i just think it's cool let's do it one more time i'm using some random leaves and vines and whatever i have in my stash some of these leaves and flowers they weren't they didn't even come from the same stamp set so don't be afraid to mix it up again if you don't have flowers don't worry I'm going to show you another way. And if you don't have press and seal, don't worry. I'll show you another way. But this is by far my favorite way. So I'm doing the same thing, just kind of adhering the leaves and the vines to that floral centerpiece. And then once I got everything aligned on that backer, again, that's just a piece of backer cardstock. I'm not going to use it. I'll press it down, make sure it's all nice and pressed in there, and then I'll just peel off the backer. And then again, I'm going to do white. You don't have to. This is just a personal preference for me. I just think it looks way cooler. But again, I'm going to get that foam tape. And I used a lot of foam tape in these cards. I have this big, huge roll that I got off of Amazon probably a year ago. It's still kicking, baby. So once I've got all that dimensional tape on there, you see it. I'm just lining it up. And another thing, press and seal. It's like see-through so you can see what you're doing. Peel it up. And bada -ba. Bang, bada, boom. Here it is. After you cut off the excess, you get something that looks like this. See? All right, so what if you don't have flowers? Well, what about circles? You might have a circle die cut. You might have a circle cutter. I remember Martha Stewart made a circle cutter. And there we are. Memory keepers make a circle cut. Maybe you can cut circles by hand. I don't know. I can't. But you can. They could be like wonky circles. They don't have to be perfectly round circles. Whatever. And then just go ahead and put it on. Again, that's just a placer. Don't worry about the color or anything. I'm just got to figure out what size, what figure out what size cardstock you're using. You might want to use something bigger or smaller, whatever. It doesn't matter. And I'm just kind of dumping these circles all over the place. Uh, for the first card, we're going to do three with circles total, by the way. So here's a look at the first one. Yeah, that's ugly. I made sure some is hanging off and everything, and then I'm going to just press that down. You know it. Sometimes the circles might shift underneath, but you can peel it up and 
kind of put it back in place if that happens. This time I'm using my bone folder to really make sure all those, because I have little circles too, I want to make sure all that press and seal is touching each of those circles. So when I peel it up, almost all the circles come up. And I find peeling the cardstock up is easier than trying to peel the press and seal off. So flip it over and peel up your placer, your cardstock. And then, of course, you've got to add your foam dimension. Now, that this takes a little extra time. Adding the foam dimension almost took longer than trying to assemble the circles. But I really think it gives it that magical pop because it's raised up. You can kind of see the shadows from the circle. You'll see what I mean in a minute. And another benefit of the press and seal is you can kind of maneuver where you want your card. I'm going to end up putting it a little bit at an angle. So it's see-through. So you can line up exactly where you want your designs to go on your cardstock panel that you're going to use, not your not your spacer cardstock panel, your actual cardstock panel. And see, I lost the little circle there, but that's no big deal. You can just pop that in later. So once you peel up the press and seal, cut off the excess, look it. Look it. And if you a circle came up, you can easily just pop it back down. And here's a look at this finished card here. So everything's just popped up like magic. It creates that nice border. But let's do it one more time, but this time we're going to get a twofer. All right, so these are the same circles. Some are left over from the card we just made and some are new circles. I just colored, these are circles that I die cut on white cardstock and I just colored them in with markers. That's all I did. Uh, you could use your colored cardstock, but that took, this is way quicker. Um, and again, if you don't have a circle die, you can cut circles, do squares, whatever. You can easily cut squares, use your paper trimmer, use what you got. All right, so I'm putting that on there. That looks so ugly, but don't worry. So at this point, you want to make sure that almost all of the edges are covered because we're going to create a twofer. We're going to have a border card and then like a little window card. And you'll see what I mean in just a second. So I'm trying to make sure that most of the edges are covered. And then I did go ahead and put on the press and seal. And then I ran this through my die cutting machine with a circle die. I did not capture that on camera. I do not know why. So again, Press and sealed the panel down, ran it through my die cutting machine with that press and seal still on there, and then I've got that circle cut out. Everything, the press and seal is still on the circle, the press and seal is, blah, 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 blah. The press and seal is still on that panel. You got it, add your foam dimension, and this is almost going to be like a floating frame when you're done here. So that's why it's important to make sure most of the edges are covered, and you'll see again what I mean in a second. And I also have a little oopsie coming up. Of course, you know me, I'm going to keep it in the video. So I'll go ahead and line that up, press that down. Again, that press and steel is still on that. And I forgot to put a little foam dimension behind that one circle. No problem. Just go in and add it. Not a big deal. This isn't the mistake I made. You'll see in a second. So anyway, you peel that up and then you've got that nice border. So here is the circle. I took the backer off. I'm adding on the foam tape. This is such a small area, I'm not surprised this happened. And uh, what happened is once I got all the foam dimension on and I went to peel up the press and seal, it took off some of my bottom hearts as well. I'm like, my bad, you see that? They just came right off. I'm like, okay, well, that looks dumb. The good thing is you can see the outline of where it was and I just glued it back on there. Not a big deal. So if that happens to you, just glue it back on there. No biggie. The outline impression from the diet, the circle was there. It was very easy to line up. So here is a look at those two cards. So you have the frame, the window, and then you have like the whole thing. So actually it's three cards with a bunch of circles. But think about the shapes and stuff that you have. But let's see how I turn them into cards. I didn't do much because the floating elements of these cards are what I think is cool. So here's what I did with all of the cards. I just used some sentiments from my magic mug. I stamped a sentiment in the middle of that circle because you have that big open space. Uh, you can see how that one turned out with me gluing those circles back down. You'll never know. But what if you don't have press and seal? Not everybody has it, and that's okay. You can use the packaging that comes from your stamp set. Sometimes you have that clear packaging that peels off the backer. Uh, you can use clear cardstock, glossy, not glossy cardstock, clear cardstock, acetate, plastic, whatever floats your boat, whatever you have. But most people have the packaging from their stamps. And go ahead and just glue all your elements down. Instead of using foam tape and all that stuff, just glue them down flat. Now, this looks like a hot mess because I'm trying to cover up a lot of the clear packaging there. Uh, but that's okay. It's kind of like the uglier it looks when you're putting it on here and piling it on here, the better. I'm sorry my camera keeps auto-focusing. I'm using a new camera for this video. Uh, so we'll get back to the, the normal next time. But anyway, go ahead, glue it all down. Oh, and some of those flowers were leftovers. That's why there's foam tape there. 
So you can pop up some of your elements. So those three center flowers going down the, the middle of the card are popped up. The rest are glued straight down. And then go ahead and add your glue to the back of the card. So we're going to keep this, this plastic, this acid, whatever you want to call it, the, the plastic packaging. We're going to keep it as is. And uh, that's it. So that's another way you can get this floating look without having the press and seal. You do see the shine from the plastic, but that's okay. And I just chose some cardstock I had in my stash that, you know, whatever. And uh, here's another version of the card. Same thing. It has the plastic packaging. I just uh, glued everything down to some glittered cardstock. So a couple different ways you can make these floating cards with press and seal, without press and seal, with flowers, with circles, cut your shapes, do whatever you, you've got. Use what you've got. But this is like a nice jumping off point. I hope you enjoyed it. Like the floatingness of these cards. Do you have a favorite? You know, I want to know. So let me know in the comments below. And I'll see you next week. Bye.